May. I gotta look over the date, 17th. Excited to have you with me. And uh, I am obviously in packing mode. So if you've been walking, watching along, you know it's happening. I am actually moving uh, during this lockdown. So that's happening on Friday and Saturday. So I won't be online, um, you know, obviously. And I apologize for the boxes in the background, but you still get Winston. So that's great. Uh, and I was like, okay, just doing some box packing. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to talk about? Well, when I was taking a little break this morning, I read an article that Brandy uh, Edwards actually, or Brandy Wilson, sorry, different friends, uh, who posted. And it was actually uh, from the Assigned Council Incorporated. It's temporary services for the legal staffing industry. But here's the neat thing. They were talking about lawyer burnout. And I know that I speak for lawyers, but I speak for a lot of ever other professional um, services firms as well. And I think that this article around how do you support a culture that is not like conducive to burnout? I want. I thought what we do for this um, this LinkedIn Live is go through the article, and I'll just share some high level thoughts that they've shared, which I think are excellent. And then I'm going to give a bit of commentary on how I believe we can incorporate it and even take it a step further to be more effective. So I skimmed the article. Uh, like every lockdown lift up, these are off the top of my head, me on, you know, just my opinion as I see the world. Hopefully have a little laugh, hopefully give you some ideas that you can take and mull around and make your own. And if you're leading a team or if you're part of a team and burnout is part of your culture, then maybe what we can glean from this article is uh, going to be really effective. Now, something I've learned to do last week was be sure I'm actually feeding live. <laughs> because if you missed it, I did an entire live, 22 minutes, I think it was, and then realized I wasn't actually, I toggled on. So I'm not going to do that twice. But it says I'm live. It says I'm toggled on. So thank you for being here with me. And uh, let's rock and roll through this article. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's called Lawyer Burnout is Unacceptably High. And I think we can interpret that for every professional. I mean, this, the, the rates right now of burnout and stress leave are incredible and you may want to look back on one of my former videos that was about languishing which has become a very popular term and the essential thing with languishing is like it's the precursor to burnout it is like the three to five months before burnout when you just kind of feel meh 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 you know all those sound effects work right uh okay I sure missed the lift up on Friday. Oh, did you catch the replay though? I hope you did because I, uh, oh no, because you were ready for three o'clock. I was talking to myself, not live. And then I did one at like three, I don't know, 45 or something started late, but uh, the regulars weren't, um, weren't there. And Amanda, awesome to have you here as well. And actually, Amanda, I know the company you work for and they are exceptionally, your leadership is exceptionally committed to helping people figure out how not to be burned out, right? Like to put the supports in place, because here's the thing about burnout is the outside circumstances don't change. You know, so often we sit and we wait for the magic. Okay. One day I'm going to be less stressed. One day things are going to slow down. One day this, like nothing, all, all this work is going to you know, start to slow down. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. The work never slows down. And the pressure from the outside world will never stop. There's always going to be things going on in the world. There's always going to be different challenges that we're facing. And so the only thing we have to control is how we react to that. And my work is trying to get people to react in a better, less stressful way to all of the chaos that's going around. And so the funny thing with burnout is like, there's not a lot of external pieces of the puzzle somebody else can put into place to stop your burnout. It has to be how you show up and how you uh, respond to all of the stressful events that are happening around you. 
And yes, Amanda, your management is amazing. I happen to know them. <laughs> Specifically one, as you know. Oh, and Suzanne's here too. So they, they work for the same company, which is awesome. Actually, one of the first speeches I gave when COVID happened. So uh, really grateful for them. So let's look at this article. It says, you know, it talks, of course, about the mental health ep epidemic. And I will for sure put this into the link on all of the different live feeds. But it's about taking steps in the right direction. So the very first thing is watching for signs of burnout. Really important, but also for yourself. Because I think so often we're caught up in the vortex of stress and we're just like kind of going and we're keeping our head above water. I remember I got a note from someone and he said, you know what, my goal every day is to put out the fires that are placed in front of me and be sure my kids are still alive. <laughs> and he said, that's all I can handle in the way that this work is like working from home and all the pressure and everything that's going on. And so watching for those signs, but like the thing is that that's unsustainable, right? Our stress is supposed to like shoot up our hormones, right? Everything like when we're in danger, like a predator. And then when we're back to safety, it's supposed to come back down and even out and go to back to our baseline. But the problem is, is that we burn out when we never actually, when we just say spiked and we rarely come back down to our baseline or we don't come back down enough that we actually get the refresh and the recharge that our body needs in order to go back up and, and uh, you know, replenish our reserves. So watching for the signs of burnout, the, the World Health Organization actually did a, um, uh, some work on this where they showed, um, hold on a sec here, I'll, actually I might have it, I suspect I do, burnout. Let's find this, okay. This is a slide from one of my presentations about the World Health Organization. But when you look at it, um, negativism, cynicism, so start looking for th signs of that. Is somebody more pessimistic than they used to be? Actually, I'm doing a speech for an organization uh, for their company because the, the HR director was like, you know, what I noticed is over the last six months, people have become a little bit more pessimistic and that isn't typical of our culture. And so that's a great sign that you're on the road to burnout. Uh, looking for mental distance from one's job. Um, by the way, I totally recognize that I'm working backwards up the slide, but that's the lockdown lift up. Didn't know I was going to bring this out for this thing. Uh, but mental distance from one's job. And like, here's the thing. You're never going to admit this to your leader. Like, because this is the, I'm just dialing it in. I'm not in the mood. I don't really want to do this anymore. I give up sort of underlying tone. Well, who's going to say that to their leader? No one. Right? Like, I think that's probably not the, the sign that you could be looking for that you're actually going to get. Constantly being exhausted and energy depletion. Now, the problem is, is that if you have little toddlers at home or and a kid was sick, you might be exhausted anyway. Or if you're, um, if you have some sort of a health challenge, that plagues you and exhausts you, then this wouldn't necessarily apply. But think about the prolonged exhaustion that doesn't have an obvious answer. That could be what's taking you towards that burnout piece of the puzzle. So these are the things we want to look for, but also like reduce professional efficiency. So if I go forward here, oops, uh, when you think like if somebody starts dropping the ball or is constantly missing deadlines and that isn't in their character, that might be something to actually be looking out for as well. Okay. So that, when we look at this article is just something that, um, let's see if, okay, that is, we'll go back here. Okay. So that is what we're looking for. And so watching for the signs as a leader, those are the types of signs you want to look for. But for yourself, looking for those signs as well. The second suggestion they have is conduct regular check-ins. Requires a regular communication. If you're only checking in once in a boom, blue moon, they cannot establish a solid uh, baseline of attorney's stress levels and well-being. Nor can you build any reliable level of trust, which I think is absolutely true. Here's the challenge. When people are really busy and their workload is a significant, 
they may be less likely to actually communicate in an effective way. So most people who are really successful tend to wear this busy as just the way it is. I'm stressed because I'm a successful professional and that's how life is. And as I mentioned earlier, that workload, right? One of my roommates used to be, um, well, she still is a lawyer, but it was, she used to be my roommate and she worked God and godly hours, like just like around the block, like around the clock. But what was interesting is she just saw that as her responsibility. And it wasn't until later on in her life where she kind of went, you know what, you know, she met a guy and she's like, you know, now I've got stepkids and started to see some other priorities. And maybe that isn't the exact way that she wants to live her life. But that takes some time to come to that level of realization. And I just, I think it's a great idea to have weekly checkups. My concern is people who are really busy may end up resenting them and it may become one more thing that they're not um, effectively doing. So I think these checkups have to be less formal and they need to be like the communication on a regular basis that is, you know, speaking to that, like nobody's just going to say, I'm really stressed, right? Or they might, but then they're usually in crisis by the time they do that. So you got to look for those warning signs but also keep an absolutely open, judgment-free culture. I was working with uh, an executive. So here's something interesting. And I like, obviously, I won't tell you the company because I don't want to uh, break any confidences. But on one side, the corporate entity is talking to me about, we don't know how to support burnout. And we're just looking at like, what could we possibly do? And on another hand, a private coaching client is talking to me about the company has such incredible um, a culture. And when I say incredible, I mean like incredibly stressful cultures. There's a lot of protect your back. Uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, sort of moving to and from and like, you know, having to watch your P's and Q's, P's and, Q's. and she's like, I would never admit to anybody how incredibly stressed I am. Because everybody shows up as if they're fantastic and they're juggling 50 different things. And the problem is, is that if you don't have a safe place, like if your culture is not safe to admit that you're struggling, then like nobody's going to tell their leader that they're struggling. Right. And so how can you make it a safe place? And one of the ways that I believe you can make it a safe place is by having a common language to describe what are the issues that are happening. And if you have seen my work around tasks, obstacles and adversity, three different things, all which require a different way to, to process. So uh, tasks we need to do. Obstacles we need to solve. And adversities we need to heal. We need to support our healing. And so if you can figure out, like, how's your task load? What obstacles are you actually facing? And you need, do you need help solving any of them? Because we can read between the lines when somebody's like, oh my gosh, this. And then you can hear the energy behind it and the emotion behind it and the frustration behind it. Then, like, as a leader, you can look at that and go, okay, wait a second. I think we might be in the burnout category here because of the pessimism, the cynicism, all of that, that I talked about as signs of burnout. So you could have a really effective conversation. And then with adversity, you need to heal. So are there any adversities going on in your life that are, um, because, because here's the thing with adversity, when we're facing something that's a catastrophic external force that will forever change the way our know, we know our lives to be, we have to heal. We have to find a way to grieve what was and become happy. And we can't cheat that process. We can't fast forward the process. And so, sorry, I'm talking fast today. But here, but when you have that common language and there are other pieces of the puzzle, right? My snowman uh, metaphor that, you know, people really tend to latch onto and have a lot of the like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because we want to strip away and get right to the real issue that you're facing. Because um, I do certain practice. Sorry. Uh, okay. So 
I am going to keep going with this article. I hope this is giving you some ideas because like thinking in your own life, what's going on in your life and your office where you can apply these things. Like I said, awesome article. Uh, and I'm just throwing my own two cents in here. Encourage lawyer assistance program utilization. So a lot of big companies have healthcare wellness programs and they aren't very well used. And I think that has a lot to do with the leadership, the judgment, the time. Like if you want somebody to use circ um, services, then you need to give them the time to use it, right? So it's a bit of a catch 22, but that's not my area of expertise. Supporting self-care. So is there a way that you as a culture can actually integrate self-care into your, your work routine? Can you encourage everyone for your Zoom meetings to stand up and do squats or whatever they're able-bodied to do? Like actually have people moving when they're like when they're on their cameras so that you're getting the blood pumping instead of sitting at the desk all day. Can you uh, do a socially distanced walk if you're in a place where you can? And for those of you who are opened up in the world and can just do whatever you want, you know, go out, have your meetings walking side by side. Like there are different ways you can integrate self-care into your actual culture. And, you know, just that energizing and, and the wellness piece and, uh, you know, allowing people to say, hey, look, it's 10 minutes lights out and everybody closed their eyes and they're at their desk and nobody, like it's a blackout zone. Nobody can, um, can actually interrupt anybody at this time. Using work blocks. When you get my updated Take Back Your Weekends book, which is just coming along so well, I keep adding to it and adding to it. And I'm so excited about it. I, I'm actually finishing it up while I'm in the middle of packing up my life and uh, for my big move. But uh, I talk about this. And, but it's one thing for you as an individual to do like a work block and have this system and I'm all owned, owned in. What if your culture, what if everybody did it and understood that we don't interrupt you when you're in this time zone? Like this is your focus time. This is what you're doing and had signs that they could integrate. Like we as a culture have to come up with ideas that can support others to get away from burnout. Okay. All right. I think I'm going on a bit, a wee bit long <laughs> for a girl who seven minutes ago didn't have a, uh, or seven minutes before I started was like, um, to the people here who are helping me, I'm like, what's my topic today? What am I going to talk about? And put on makeup and ran over to the computer. I thought it was really funny. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, I loved this article. So I did that. Anyway, okay. So it also says fight for mental health budgets. I'm going to add to that. Fight for training budgets. Fight for someone like me to come in and give that language. Fight for, uh, you know, the fact that we need to, you know, maybe have more staff if that's plausible or outsource some of the workload if that's you know, after we strategically go through the workload issue and where's the burnout coming from and, uh, you know, is it actually manageable? Like at some point, it doesn't matter how many productivity techniques you have in your back pocket. If you are not, uh, like if a person can't physically do the work in the amount of time that's being done, then it's asking too much of somebody. Like it just is. So then we got to apply the problem solving framework which you'll be able to get in my Take Back Your Weekends book when it comes out. You got to figure that out so that you can, you can, I don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is what I was, but like, I don't remember. I totally lost it. This is what you get pack and alley here, folks. Pack and alley for the, the lo lockdown lift up. Anyway, fight for those budgets, for training outsourcing and uh, potentially, it, you know, there could be a rejig on how much workload people have. Like maybe there are projects you're doing that don't work. Maybe there are clients that, who you're serving that are not like profitable and are taking up too much staff time and you need to offload those to a competitor or to an aligned professional or just let them go and figure out somebody else, right? Like, you know, want to be kind about it, but so, uh, that's that old 80-20 rule, right? If 
20% of your clients are 80% of your money, that's great. But if, you know, I don't know what the rules are, but like if 20% of your clients are taking up 80% of your time and they're not the ones who are making you the money, then maybe it's not a good fit, right? Or they're draining your energy and that's contri contributing to your, um, your burnout. But anyway, I hope this has given you a couple ideas because I think burnout as a stress acceptance culture is a problem. And so if we're just like sucking up buttercup, you got to get on with it. That's the workload. Do your job. Stop trying to burn. Like, you know, you can't, uh, you know, you just got to deal with it. The truth of the matter is it's not going to change. It's not going to change. And Greg's got a comment. Let's read Greg's comment. See, I can always put his up because uh, without reading it first, because I always know it's going to be thoughtful. All right. These are great tips and strategies. Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing the issue to light. I might also suggest the importance of a recharge day. Yes, I had one yesterday and it was the first one in a long time. It really helped clear my cash. Oh, I love that reference. Clear your cash. We all know every now and again, we have to clear our cash. Bang on. Um, taking that time to recharge. And here's the thing. There could be times in your life where there's not a lot of recharge. And maybe we'll, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to make a note. Tomorrow's topic is going to be on the recharge. Okay, let's leave it there. Because I think if we do that recharge, because I don't think everybody always knows how to recharge themselves. So let's do that as our topic tomorrow. I am going to sign off. I am, uh, as you can see, boxes over here, dog over here, who's freaking out. He's like, why is all my stuff going in boxes? What is going on? We, uh, yesterday he pouted. Oh, I wonder how I could show you this. I'll put it out. He was on this couch where he doesn't normally sit on top of clothes that were going to charity and with his snout into the wall for like <laughs> the whole afternoon. It wasn't yesterday, it was the day was Saturday. Because he's like, I don't get it. And that was his way of pouting. And I thought it was the most adorable thing of trying to communicate with his mama saying, they're, they're packing up my toys and all my stuff. And I don't know where his blankie went, but anyway. Grateful for you. Have the best day. And tomorrow we'll talk about reset and recharge. No need to come up with a topic. I already got it. Hope you have the best day ever. Bye.